Hey guys, it's Will with Grimspeed again, and today we're going to be talking about our Subaru Lightweight Crank Pulley Installation. Now we're going to go over two variations of this install. Please take note when we do switch. The tools we're going to need for today's install are two half inch drive socket wrenches, one 3 8 inch drive socket wrench, a 10 millimeter socket, a 22 millimeter socket, which is a half inch drive, a 12 millimeter socket, an 11 millimeter socket, a flathead screwdriver, two breaker bars, a half inch drive torque wrench, an 8 millimeter Allen, and a 10 millimeter Allen. First, we're going to start by removing the OEM air intake duct. All that you're going to need for this is the flathead screwdriver. Simply loosen the screws and pop out the clips. Now we're going to use our 10 millimeter socket and loosen up the left bolt. The right is actually going to be a pressure fit pin. Now we're going to use our 12 millimeter socket and we're going to loosen up the front facing bolt on the tensioner. Then we're going to loosen the top bolt. Once this is broken loose, back it out by hand until all of the threads are almost out of the bracket. If you can't push the alternator down, take your same socket and loosen up the other side of the alternator. This will allow you to push the alternator down, which will relieve tension on the front belt. Now we're going to simply remove the old belt. Now with any belt you remove from an engine, it is always highly recommended to replace the belt. However, in some cases, an older belt may be reused. Please consult a professional if you're unsure if the belt is fit for reuse. Now what we're going to use here is either a 12 millimeter socket or a 12 millimeter wrench. And we're going to loosen up the bolt that goes through the idler pulley. We just want to relieve tension on this bolt and bracket. Now we're going to take our 12 millimeter socket and we're going to relieve the tension on the tensioning rod. Simply turn it to the left to loosen it. And this should relieve all tension on the pulley and the belt. Once tension is relieved, we want to make sure we're removing the belt and inspecting the belt. This belt, as you can see, is very cracked and does in fact need to be replaced badly. Do not reuse a belt like this. Now we're going to take our 22 millimeter socket and place it inside the pulley on the head of the bolt. Once we lock it in place, make sure that you are only rotating the pulley clockwise at all times. Do not rotate counterclockwise. Then you're going to position the socket wrench so that the handle faces straight up. Now in this engine, this will use a stretch belt configuration, which means the belt actually has small flexible properties to it. It does not use a tensioner. So to remove this belt, you can either cut it or place tension with another hand on the belt towards the outside of the vehicle, rotating the pulley clockwise. You can walk the belt off of the pulley safely while keeping the integrity of the belt intact. Once the belt pops off, you're going to simply remove your wrench out of the pulley and then remove the belt. And this is another belt that is worth inspecting. In this case, the belt was very, very new, so we're going to reuse it here. Now for this style of OEM pulley, we're going to use the four inner holes. These holes will be in 10 millimeter Allen head. Now for this style of pulley, we're going to use the four bolts. 
the smaller, thinner, longer bolts. These are going to use an 11 millimeter socket. Now we're taking our other half inch drive socket wrench with our 22 millimeter socket and hooking it up to the bolt going through the OEM crank pulley. Now remember the goal here is to keep the pulley centered. Do not let it move. If it does move, it should only move clockwise. So the goal is to going to hold that straight while rotating the center bolt to the left to loosen it from the crank. Once the center bolt in the pulley is loose, we're going to rock the pulley back and forth until we can actually remove the pulley. Now when installing our aftermarket pulley, we're going to take the three outermost holes and place the plastic shims on them. This is to protect the tool from scratching the face of your new pulley. We're going to use our three shorter thick bolts, which are eight millimeter Allen heads. These will actually screw into the face of our aftermarket pulley. Now when installing this, we want to make sure the keyway lines up with the notch on the crank. So while positioning it, you may need to rock it back and forth a couple of times to get the keyway to fit just right. Once it's in there, we're going to reinsert the bolt that we removed previously from the OEM crank pulley. We're going to start by hand tightening it. Now we're going to take our half inch drive torque wrench with our 22 millimeter socket and turn it up to 94 foot pounds. Now we're going to be turning our torque wrench to the right to tighten down the bolt going through the aftermarket pulley. The other half inch drive socket wrench will be going to our pulley removal and installation tool holding the pulley still. Remember if it's going to turn it should turn clockwise. Now we have actually manufactured a unique piece to work with the Gates Stretch Belt Installation Kit. Once again, we're going to be placing two shims on our pulley and then placing our special bracket, which will slide into the Gates channel and bolting it in with the two small short bolts. This will be required for reinstalling a belt on any 2008 plus vehicle with a stretch belt. This tool is the only tool that will work with our aftermarket pulley. Now as you can see, this is the Gates kit on the OEM pulley. This kit will work with both styles of the OEM pulley. The way it works is it'll actually feed the belt onto the pulley. Now you will be doing this on the vehicle. So we're going to route our new belt. And we're going to bolt on the bracket provided in the Gates belt kit from us on top of our belt.
these bolts will go in place of where the tensioner would be on this engine if it had one. Again, these will be 12 millimeters. Now the function of this kit is to actually feed the belt on. Because there is so much tension, you can't simply slide it on. And because there is no tensioner, as you saw before, it's not something that can simply be put on. It needs to be forced on. We highly recommend using this kit, as if you don't, there is a very, very big potential for ruining the belt placing it on. You want to start with it correctly aligned on the top pulley. The goal is to work it onto the crank pulley. We're going to simply connect our 22 millimeter socket to the crank bolt again, also making sure the car is still in neutral, and we're going to rotate it clockwise to the right. As we rotate it, our kit will actually feed the belt onto the back threads of the pulley. Now this will take a little bit of practice. Make sure that you are not binding the belt and then it is smoothly fed onto the pulley. And that is what it will look like once it is completely fed on. Now we will start with the final belt installation. This will be the same for both models. We're going to slip our new belt on the left pulley on the top pulley, and finally onto the crank pulley. Now, your alternator should still be pressed down, so there should not be too much tension on this belt. Now make sure that the belt is aligned properly before you proceed to put tension back on the belt. You'll put tension back on the belt by turning the tensioning rod to the right, effectively raising the alternator, placing tension on the belt. Once you have achieved a nice strong tension equal to the stretch belt, then you're going to tighten the front bolt on the tensioning rod, and again tighten the bolt on the right side of the alternator. Here we are starting the car to make sure that everything is in line. Reinstalling the pulley cover with our 10 millimeter socket, and of course putting the intake duct back on. Simply screw in the plastic pieces and press them in place.